Hi everybody, I'm Stephen Quadros and welcome to Japan. Tonight we've got a wild card which features two distinctively different styles. We have the cool efficiency of the European fighters like Igor Volchanchin and Sammy Schultz and the hot-blooded fury of Vanderlei Silva and Quentin Jackson. So in a lot of ways, tonight's show really lives up to its name, Cold Fury, which is really interesting because you know the Brazilians have been doing so well here lately in Pride. Yeah, I assume you're talking about the ex-murderer from Brazil, that's what they call him, Vanderlei Silva. Of course. He is the man. I mean, this guy is the man. He is the Pride middleweight champion. And although tonight's not going to be a title fight, Alexander Otsuka, the guy he's going to face, he's going to try to put a mark tonight. Now everybody says, Alexander Otsuka, what is he going to do against Vanderlei Silva? Well, you got to understand, when Otsuka came into the Pride, he beat Marco Ruas. After that, he went the distance with Fofchenchen, and he went the distance with Hanzo Gracie. So if this guy is in shape, this could be a real good fight. But speaking of the Iceman himself, Igor Volchanchin really needs a win here tonight to get back in the heavyweight title picture because he lost his last fight to Mario Sperry. So he's got to dig deep to find that ice-cold tenacity that he's freeze-dried so many opponents with. Okay, okay, that's the card. But I'm here for the party. Where are the Pride girls? I don't know, but I wish they'd hurry up. <laughs> what are you going to do with that, man? That's not going to help. I'm El Wapo. They're here for me. Yeah, but I'm Steven, so whatever. You were early, I don't know. Though. I don't know. Let's go find them. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> What are we doing wrong? Obviously, we don't have mojo. You're right. Mojo. We must learn mojo. Christmas and happy Pride 18. Koyoi wa Pride 18 ni yokoso. Tanoshigu na koi bito tachi wo yokome ni konna abunai Christmas party ni kite kurete honto ni arigato. Sonna kitoku na minasan ni Pride kara totte oki no present. Come on, Pride Christmas girl. Oh ho oh, oh. ho. Okay, boss, it's the Christmas show. Uh, oh, yeah. Welcome to the Pride Fighting Championships, Cold Fury 2. Cold Fury stands for a lot of things, but we're in the dead of winter here in Tokyo. And in the ring right now, we have the lovely Pride girls dancing around in little Santa Claus outfits in front of the ball of mystery, we'll call it. <laughs> I have the feeling that the outfit's going to go out, so we've got to keep an eye on the ring. I think it's very important. I don't know. I think the girls are going out. They're going out. At least momentarily. They will be back though, folks. Yeah. They gotta be, they gotta be. The good thing is that when you and I come here to the Pride Fighting Championship, they'll have something like this ball suspended in the middle of the uh, ring, but we won't know what they have in store because Folks, we don't know what the uh, design of the show is going to be. We just come here to commentate. So if that thing blows up or bounces off Boss's head or whatever, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm going to use it as a speedball. If it comes down, I'm going to use it as a speedball, I think. I think what I'll do is I'll slip and then slip and let it swing. Okay, but I'll, I'll protect you also, you know. If it comes uncertainly or without any warning, don't worry about it. I got you coming. Oh, there we go. There we go. As you said, boss, oh, look at that. Wow. Now that's what I'm talking about. Welcome to Pride, everybody. Oh, yeah. Yay! How'd you like that, everybody? 
みんなかわいいプレゼントは気に入ってもらえたかな<笑>浮かれた遊びはこんなもんで十分プライド18これからが本当のプレゼント2001年プライド最後の戦いを繰り広げる危険な男たちを紹介しよう That's our buddy inside the ball. That's Kay Grant, one of the greatest announcers in the world today. He's got this low voice that even nobody in America has. That but he's a Japanese guy. But he's got high hair to offset、oh, yeah. that voice. I mean, his hair goes way up. It's the Japanese Elvis. You know, Uh-oh. Is it growing? Is the ball growing? Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Nice shot. Quinton of Page Jackson. From the United States of America, Quinton Rampage Jackson. Quinton Rampage Jackson getting ready to make his entrance into the arena here at Fukuoka Mesa Marine. One thing I love, boss. And this is a brand new, this is our newcomer, Alex Stiegling. The Pride Fighting Championships really showcases an international cast of characters. We've got Alan Goes here from Brazil. We had Alex Stiegling earlier from the United States. We've got Japanese fighters. We've got fighters from Europe, from Russia. It's truly an international flavor. Alex Andrade from the Lion's Den. Guy's got a good left hook, right hand, he says. Gonna have his work cut out for him with that man right there, Gorilla Ninja Hua from Shootbox. Oh, that's gonna be a tough fight, that one. Oh, now that's Jan the Giant Nordiki. He is from South Africa and he is a real slugger. He's gonna be facing this man, Norahisa Yamamoto, a rings and pride veteran. Valentine o v e r i n coming back in after a tough loss to Shootbox Arsuario Silva. Looks very focused tonight, though. And his opponent, a real favorite, let's see the crowd. A real favorite here is that Igor of o c h a n c h e n from Ukraine. Jerry, Jeremy Horn is a newcomer here in Pride, but he's definitely not a newcomer in mixed martial arts. The guy's got a lot of fights, and he's going to be fighting another man with a good deal of experience. And I k i r o Shoji. Shoji looks like he's in good shape with this fight box. Oh, yeah, way better than last time. Last time he took a kind of on the last minute. But now he's ready. Otsuka! That was Jeremy Otsuka, the, the famous pro wrestler here. Really needs to get back in action with a win, but he really picked a tough guy here. The Pride Middleweight Champion himself from Brazil, Vanderlei Silva. It's a scary individual right there. This guy's a real character now, really sprouting wings now with his personality, but it's that front kick. His opponent right there. Takayama, Yoshihiro Takayama, look at this! Oh yeah! These two very large men are going to be going head to head. And that's our lineup, folks. Pride Fighting Championships f u l Fury 2. Here at Fukuoka, Japan. The drama builds. Who will knock who out? Who will submit who? Will that ball blow up? We don't know. It will. Trust me. The drama builds up. I dare not blink. Oh no. No, he's got the candle. Don't do the candle. No, don't do that. No. Oh! Hey! Ha ha ha. How are you going to deal with the excitement of Daijiro Matsui? Man, the same way I deal with everybody, man. You know, it's Christmas time, I got two presents for Matsui. My left and my right. 
You know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about him. I ain't worried about my suit. You know what I'm saying? I just want to get home for the, for the holidays. And now for the first match. Alcona Yuri, Quinton Rampage Jackson Sage no new job. Okay. They know him because of his chain. They know him because of his snarl. He howls like a wolf while he walks into the ring. He is Quinton Rampage Jackson. He's a California transplant originally from Memphis, from Tennessee. The United States of America. Yeah, he's got a, he's here to Santa Mark. I mean, he won his last two fights, and he did real good against uh, Sakuraba. That was actually his debut in Pride. Uh, all of his other fights he won, actually. That's his only loss against Sakuraba, so he's ready. He actually he has another loss okay. uh, in his very first professional fight. But it was a war against a guy named Marvin Eastman, and that was in King of the Cage. And he loves the spotlight. He absolutely loves Japan. I think he's thinking about moving here. I think so, too. He's got the Japanese girlfriend who came to visit him for the last two months in, uh, in Los Angeles. Yeah, he's, he's totally in the house right now. What is that T-shirt? Is that a Gary Goodrich T-shirt right there? Love that headband. Now, yeah. this is the kind of guy, the proverbial guy, if you're walking down a dark alley, saw this guy walking on uh, the dark alley too, you probably walk on the other side of the dark alley. But Quentin is really an animated, fun-loving guy. But once he gets in that ring, he's all business, all about destruction. Yeah, he loves to slam people. That's what he calls it. He says, I'm not a good wrestler, I'm not a good fighter. But I, that, that's why I slam everybody. I just pick him up and slam him on the ground. He tried to, to throw Sakuraba out of the ring. Yeah, he did. Now, he's fighting one of Sakuraba's teammates tonight in Daijiro Matsui. Matsui, we always think of Matsui as one of the most exciting fighters in mixed martial arts, even though he's got a lot of losses. But ironically, Quentin said when he thinks of Matsui, he thinks of boring. Yeah, that was something that uh, caught me by surprise because, like you said, Matsui is there to fight. This fight is going to be a very high energy level fight for sure. Quentin is here. Matsui's coming up. Quentin Look said that uh, he brings personality into the ring because he's got no technique, but I don't think so. I think he's got good wrestling technique and his stand-up is getting better. He's got a good right hand. He knocked out Ishikawa in the last pride with a flurry of punches. So he's constantly improving. At 23 years of age, he's got nothing but up to go. Yeah, I've been the corner there. We see Dave, his trainer, and actually his brother. He brought his brother this time. We can't see him right now, but he is here. He's in the house. Yeah, so Quentin getting ready to come in. Quentin likes to wear those Muay Thai shorts. Yeah. Because he's been training a lot of Muay Thai there. And he does represent Team Punishment, and that's the famed team with Tito Ortiz. Quentin Rampage Jackson. And here comes the second half of the equation. Daijiro Matsui, we know this gentleman well. We've seen him fight some classic matches. Scored probably the win of his career over Jose Pele Landi, and that was in Pride 14, May 28th of this year. He won a unanimous decision over the Brazilian Valley Judo superstar. No one expected that box. No, that was something really special. Remember, he was in the guard, in Pele's guard, he grabbed Pele's ears and then started slamming Pele's head on the canvas. That was the first thing First time that I ever saw a technique like that happening in the ring. And uh, Quentin Jackson being known to perform a number of slams when somebody goes for a submission. Pele was going for submissions against Matsui. Matsui slammed Pele right on his head a number of times. Of course, Pele hung on to that and uh, lost his decision, didn't uh, really give it up. Matsui really needs to get focused here. He's facing a really, really dangerous fighter in Jackson. Coming off back-to-back -back losses, Matsui was stopped in his last fight by a really tough individual, Murillo Ninja Hua from Shootbox. 
And that was uh, September 24th of this year. So he's really got to stay focused. What is his game plan here against uh, Jackson Box? I don't know. He's got to take him down because Quinton improved a lot in boxing. Like you said, he's training very hard on it. Uh, he's good in uh, protecting himself from a takedown. Matsui, his boxing is so-so. He's, he's a better submission fighter than he's a striker. So he got to try to take the fight to the ground, but you never know. I always say you never know what he did. God knows he trained two times a day boxing in a gym for the last yeah, day since September, since his loss. So I moved quite a bit there. I feel that uh, it's imperative for Matsui to take this fight into the later part of the fight because the early part is going to is going to be he's going to be in deep water here with Jackson. Jackson's going to try and knock him out. He's going to try and destroy him. And the farther the fight goes, the more it's going to fa favor that man, oh, Daijiro Matsui. Oh, oh, I agree totally. Zen it seems like Quentin is a little, if I may say, relaxed right now. Yeah, he's in a, in a different kind of state than he is normally in. Uh, he had to lose this morning a lot of weight. He was in the sauna with a sweat suit on because he uh, weighed in too much. So he, I hope it's not going to affect him in the fight. He doesn't look warmed up, though, is what I'm saying. Is that oh, he, yeah. he looks bone dry. Mats true. Matsui has a little sheen of sweat, but this would be an absolute catastrophe because Quentin is really on his way up in this business. If he drops this fight and loses to Matsui, that's going to really hurt that aura that he's built over here in Japan. So I think there's a lot of pressure on him to really keep the uh, gravy train going for Sakuraba in uh, Matsui's corner. Here we go! Matsui in the blue, Quentin in the black and red. In the boxing stands. Oh, oh knee groin right to the there. groin right away. Oh, how unfortunate. Oh, please, let that, this not be the end. Well, Masui being a true warrior, he probably yeah. we're gonna have to take to a fight. we're gonna have to take a little break there, folks. Um, it looks to me like Quentin isn't focused on this. For, uh, it, yeah, this is th this is very bad for a fighter because and there it is, right oh. up the middle. That was right up the middle. There's no question that was a knee to the groin. Uh, a great uh, street self-defense move, but in the Pride Fighting Championships, we do have rules, and that is one of the prohibited strikes. You, you cannot strike the groin area, you cannot headbutt, you cannot eye gouge, you cannot bite, you cannot elbow to the head. So Matsui is going to give, he's going to be given up to five minutes to recover. Yeah, you know what, even if he continues to fight, that this will hurt constantly. Um, it will affect him later on in the fight. He's in bad shape. Yeah. He's in bad shape here. This is reminiscent of the Pride Fighting Championships that we had last year. It was Pride 11. Gilbert Ivel faced Vanderlei Silva. And within the first minute of the fight, Vanderlei threw a low roundhouse kick, which caught Gilbert right on the cup protector. Same thing happened. Unfortunately, he's, he's out of it. Yep. There, there's the stretcher right there. He's done. The fight's going to be over. They're going to make a ruling here any second. Matsui can barely even get up. Oh, my God. How painful must this be? Physical, but also mentally. It's, it's the worst, especially for a person like Matsui. He's a real fighter. Wants to be there. Wants to fight. Comes to fight. It's like two months of training down the drain for both fighters right now. Well, that's a hell of a Christmas present. Okay, we're going to make a... Okay, they're going to... 
if Matsui is able to continue as my partner Ross Rutten said, they may have a round two of this particular fight after the fourth match or later tonight. So stay tuned, folks. It's going to be a grudge match. It's going to be a big time grudge match. Newcomer Alex Stiebling is coming in off a 16-man tournament win in the IBC Venezuela, but his opponent, Alan Goes from Brazil, is one tough customer, boss. Oh, yeah. Today, in the pre-interview we had with him, he looked ready, and he wants to make the world known that he is still there, sharp and ready to kill. Hello, Pride fans. My name is Matt Hume. I'm here at Pride Cold Fury 2. I am one of your official judges for Pride. And I'll be joining Steven Quadros and Boss Root in the commentary booth tonight to uh, help you better understand the judging criteria that we use here at Pride, as well as some of the technical aspects that uh, you'll be seeing in the fights tonight at Pride. Thank you all for tuning in to Pride, and I hope you enjoy the fights. Boss Rutten and myself are joined by our dear friend and Pride referee, Matt Hume. Welcome, Matt. So, Matt, you're going to be helping us uh, establish the criteria for the uh, scoring, correct? Yeah, that's correct, Stephen. It's great to be back here again with you two uh, at Pride Cold Fury 2. And um, yeah, I'm going to be out here uh, covering some of the technical aspects today and going over the scoring system. One, one, one. So it's always good to have you, Matt, because you, you really will grow with us. And here he comes into the ring. Oh, he's running. He's running. He's got a lot of energy. And look at the photographers saying, hey, slow down. Let us take a picture of you. Alex Stiebling, he's brand new in Pride, but he's not new in Mixed Martial Arts, coming in with a 16-1 one and one no contest record. That's a very impressive record. Got submission ability, likes those leg locks. He just won a 16-man mixed martial art tournament, the International Valley Judo Championships in Venezuela. And he's a real fireball. Uh, his, his nickname is... Is the blue-headed, the blue-headed, Tornado. <laughs> okay, whatever. ただいまより第二試合を行います。アコナ、188cm、86.5kg。アレックス、スティーブレン。Well, there he is. Right newcomer, Alex Steven from the USA. アコナ。180cm, 91.5 Alan goes from Brazil. Seems very relaxed, but we know that he's very intense. This is a do or die situation for him, he feels. Alan, come here. Yeah, he comes up with devastating loss against Mark Coleman. He needs to show the people that he's still in the game. And uh, Alex is here to set a mark too, you know. He's a young kid with lots, lots of potential. Oh, Alan. look at this stare down. Look at this stare down. Alan is intense. He's got the young firecracker, but Alan's only 29 years old. Both men really intent on winning this fight. Actually, Alan is 30 years old. Whoa. Well, he wants it, and look, Alex wants it too. Oh, they want at each other bad, folks. I expect this to be an extremely competitive match. Allen going for the takedown. Right into the guard of Alex Diebling. Watch here for Allen to sit up and start to work a pass. steebling has got the arm dragged, but it'll be only momentary before Allen starts sitting up and posturing up and trying to get past that guard. Yeah, we see Steve Lee make the have a the butterfly guard. That means that he, yeah, he doesn't care when Allen is going to stand up again. And as but Matt said, it looked like he's trying for that pass on that uh, left leg of Alex Steebling. Alex Steebling is on the ground with one of the premier jujitsu grapplers in the world. Allen goes. 
Now he's made his way to half guard. He's uh, scoring well right now. He got the takedown and he's improving his position. Look for him to go to either side position or full mount from here. And that There's right arm is in a bad position. We saw that right arm be a factor when Mario Sperry fought Igor Bovchanchin. Allen could put that right arm in front of uh, the throat of Alex Stiebling. Yeah, you see Allen burying his head there. If Stiebling raises his arm, Allen will sink in a side choke from that position. Exactly. It's going to be over. But Stiebling is good at submissions, and he will know what's going on, what Allen is working for. Well, both gentlemen. Oi, 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 this could be dangerous. He's got it. He's got that side, He's got choke. side choke. Oi, oi, oi. Could be over. Yeah, Allen's got the hand on the side of the head there, but uh, looks pretty tight. You know, if that arm Spit. comes across the face, he could be in real trouble. What can Steve Lee do here, man? He's going to try well, to turn him. should try to turn in and get a little space on his neck there. He's ne he needs to raise Allen's. Oh, he's, looks like he's tapping. No, no, no. It's no, Allen's hand. He, he says okay. maybe he's out. If Stiebling is able to lift Allen's hips and clear a little space and get his guard back, then he'll be able to release the pressure on that choke. Yeah, and Stiebling can try to turn him to the left. Yeah, yeah he can bridge and This is dangerous when he goes to the side. Yes. Now it's going to be more dangerous for Stiebling. But he's turning on his side, so he's, that's good. Whoa! He got out. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! <laughs> Stiebling got out of a side choke from Allen Goes. We thought he was history. I thought this is unreal. He did a very good job of pushing Allen's hips away there, so Allen couldn't come in tight on it. Allen's going to do that pass again, Matt. Yeah. Now, Stiebling leaves his guard open, which uh, allows Allen to get past one leg very easily. And then from there, so he's going past one leg, and he's going to shove the knee through the crotch to get past. Yeah, the moment, he, moment he's going to try to pass, Stiebling should try to twist him to the left. Especially because he's got the underhook also. He can use that, that right foot. Do you feel uh, Stiebling is dazed right here? I think he's okay. I, I think he's okay. He's just, he's collecting himself now and uh, trying to figure out what he's going to do here on the ground. He, he likes the legs, but uh, Allen stays so tight in there that he can't really lift Allen to get to the legs. The Japanese have nicknamed Alex Stiebling the fighting Brad Pitt. <laughs> Yeah, 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 the Mexican. Not a bad nickname to have. There's that shoulder. Yep. Allen was one of the first guys that uh, used the shoulder strike uh, when he fought Vernon Tiger White in uh, Pride last year. He did very well with that. Oh, yeah. It's a real good distraction. Exactly. It bunches. And you see Allen's hand going up on the knee. He's going to go for the pass again, try to shove that knee through. He uses those little shoulders and putting his head down as a distraction so that he can get past that guard. Stiebling's got his foot up on the hip there, holding him away. Okay, we've got six minutes left in the first round. The first round is a 10 minute round. The next two rounds are five minutes each, three rounds total, if it does go that far. So far it's been what we expected. Allen goes to the grappler dictating the pace on the ground. Right now on the judges criteria here, Allen is definitely ahead. He's uh, got the takedown, he's dominated ground position, and he could even score a damage point with that choke that he had on. I'm gonna be It'll be interesting to see if they either have a restart or Alex can get out from under it and they stand back up. I want to see what's going to happen with their uh, supposed Muay Thai training. Yeah, we, we may have to wait till the next round to see that. It looks like Allen's pretty tight down here, but it'll be interesting when they get back to that position. Not a lot of people have gotten out from under Allen goes once he gets on top. Of no, he's very tight with his positions. And we're halfway through. Five minutes left, folks. Looks like Allen's starting to throw his punches a little bit harder now, which uh, could either be because he, he's confident or because he's frustrated. Stiebling has got a lot of endurance among his four wins in one night to win the IBC Venezuela. His first fight he was losing. And he basically had the win because of the exhaustion of the other guy. He outlasted the other guy. So I don't think stamina is going to be a factor in this fight. But that left knee might be a factor right now. Oh, he, he, he caught the chicken wing. Oh, oh, oh. Looks like it's just, yeah. 
Alex is going to spin out. Wow. If he's going to escape this, it's going to be unbelievable. He's got to get the leg out. Very oh, he got out. Likes those leg locks. He's got a number of submissions. Toe hold, heel hook, and knee bar. And a number of submission escapes. Yeah. Now, does that affect the scoring, the escape and then the attempt? Not really, because the escape came from Allen's submission hold. Um, Allen would actually score in that case. Um, he did a very good job with that chicken wing, and it looked like it did some damage. So, had, had Steveling gone to the leg bar and made it a little more effective, or had he come on top and control a little while, then it would score on the judges' criteria. But since the position was reversed right back after the submission and Allen's back in control now, uh, that won't count on the judges' scoring card. Alex Diebling is cornered by Jeremy Bolt and managed by Phyllis Lee, where Allen goes, the man on top, uh, has been trained by Luis Alves, uh, who's a really well-known Muay Thai master from Brazil. Yeah, Stibling should uh, try to uh, wrap with his right arm, trap the left arm of Allen, and explode to the right, at least to create some space and go to a full guard, maybe. Yeah. And, and maybe he's going to turn him with, with it. Stibling's done well throughout the round of recovering his guard, but Allen just keeps passing. Oh, that was a good right hand, too. Another punch there by Allen Goes. <laughs> Alan very patient. He was so intense. We've seen Alan before come in, before fights, and being relaxed, being very jolly, but he wasn't this time. He didn't want to joke. He didn't want to play around. He's putting the pressure on uh, Stiebling's throat with his shoulder. Yeah, now it's off. But he's got all these little annoying things to annoy your opponent and take advantage of it and then create an opening to go for a submission or, a, yeah, or pass the half guard. So annoyance does play a factor in the game then, boss. <laughs> oh, yeah, but no talking, no talking, <laughs> because then you would be the world champion, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> I stand my kid top. One thing you'll notice Alan do doing is he's passed the guard on Alan's right side, but he keeps the left arm underhooked so that Steven can't go out the back on him there. Very technical ground fighter. Very technical and very patient. We wondered if Allen was going to come out here with a burst of energy. He has, but he's been relaxed. And this shows a lot of experience. How many times do you think he's been on the mat down there in Brazil with Mario Sperry, Antonio Rodrigo Minotar Nogueira, and a vast fleet of other fighters who are so good on the ground? Okay, here we go. And Alex needs this stand up and this takedown protected defense. Wow. That was really, really a good attempt to stand back up. It was neutralized by Goes, and he got the, another takedown. Man. Another takedown. It was a nice attempt to, to get free and uh, good pressure by Allen, keeping him tight to the hips and taking him back down. Now they will stand up and walk back to the center and resume the same position. I think this is a good rule because A, we don't want them to slide out of the, the ring, you know, and B, it's better visually for the audience. Yes. The, the people in, here in attendance, if it goes over by the ring post or something, it's really hard to see what's going on. Yeah. And they, they don't want the ropes interfering in the fight. They, they want the fighters to be able to work their techniques and not have to deal with the ropes. Are you impressed with Stiebling's composure? under this pressure box. Uh, yes, I am, because he's coming in against a guy like Alan Goes, and everybody knows that he's the master of submissions. Um, I think round two and round three uh, could be in favor of Stiebling, because, like you said, his stamina is real good, and his uh, takedown defense for the second takedown was way better already. And um, it took, I think it took a, also, it takes a lot of like for um, Alan, it takes a lot when you put the pressure on for a takedown and somebody defends it, defends it, defends it, it takes some power away. So later on in the match, it could affect. Oh, yeah, I think that the stamina will be a factor if this uh, fight does go into what uh, It's definitely going into the second round now. Uh, Allen goes in total charge there in round one. He got the takedowns, as Matt Hume said. Applied the pressure with a number of submissions. There he is in his corner. And we're going to see how his condition is. Condition, I believe, is going to be a huge factor in this fight. Absolutely. 
Allen controlled that round. We'll see uh, what, ha what happens when he has to execute a few more takedowns. Like Boss said, the takedowns are the most tiring part of the game when someone has a good defense against them. Alex so. Stiebling, pictured there, said that he took this fight on two weeks' notice. So that conditioning that he used to win that IBC tournament may be a little bit depleted. We don't know if he was training. He said he was training, but as we know, when a fighter has a mission and he's signed to fight and he's got six weeks out, it's a different kind of training than maintenance training. Absolutely. We'll, we'll see. We've got two more rounds, two, two five-minute rounds now. We had a 10-minute round. Now we're going to the five-minute round. So Here we go. The side choke. Uh, Alan Goh is going to lift that uh, left. Look at him. He uses his head to pry that arm in front of the uh, the neck of now, Alex Stiebling. You'll see Stiebling's arm is down by his ear. We call that answering the phone. When someone puts a side choke on you, that can keep that one artery on that side free so you don't pass out. And he did a great job of holding him off there. And then a great job of getting his arm down here on the hips, pushing the hips away so that he can turn and escape the choke. So this young upstart from Indianapolis, Indiana is really hanging in there with Alan Goes, although he lost that first round. He definitely lost the first round, but he's doing a great job. Not, not too many upstarts are gonna make it through the first round with Alan. No. So. Yeah, plus we got the, the pride rules and they don't rule by, whoa, there's, oh, there's the Kimura. And it is on. And look at the turn, and, and he's trying, and he's got that leg tangled up, and he's trying to tuck and roll. He's going for that leg. He's grabbing the leg already for the leg lock. He knows he's going to get it. He you went see? right for the knee bar, and Allen pushed his way out. What a good technique by both fighters. Great composure there by Stiebling to keep his head while he's in there and then come out with the knee bar. Yeah, but let's see if they're going to do some banging here at the beginning of round two. Yeah, he's got to do everything in his power to keep this fight on his feet. And he's coming out with a jab right hand just to measure distance, didn't land. He's going there for a body lock. Oh, Alan looks a little fatigued here. And now he's nice got sprawl go. there by Alex Stiebling. And Alan trying to pull guard. Check up your feet. Check up your feet, sprawl. Good defense there by Stiebling, using his leg inside to keep Allen's hips away. Whoa, he's to the head. Hey, Stiebling started off as a wrestler, and we're seeing that right now. Allen pulling back into the guard. The one thing that the viewers should realize here is that even though we said Allen won the first round, the judges do not score by the round. They actually score the complete fight. So... Uh, even if a guy wins two rounds but doesn't score a lot in those two rounds, in the third round, another fighter can come back and score a lot of points and win that fight. And I believe that the judges really favor the fighter who's trying to end the fight. Absolutely, that's exactly correct, Stephen. That's the number one criterion pride is that these guys finish the fight. Yeah, because it's not a technical thing where we're trying to bore people to tears. They're trying to terminate. They're trying to exterminate. They're trying to end the fight. That's it. Boss knows a little about that. <laughs> yeah, you know a little bit about it too, Matt. Like, I saw your fight in extreme fighting against uh, Pat Militich, Eric Paulson. Yeah, been in a few of them. Boss has had a couple rumbles too. Oh, I did. I did, I did. But um, these guys are these guys are right there at that top level, though, and they are they are going to try to end this fight, as we've seen already in the first round, a few good attempts. Alex should uh, put the pressure on right now. I think he really should get busy, punching, punching, try to pass the guard, do something. Yeah, Allen scored so much in that first round that he, Steve, uh, Stiebling, Stiebling is not going to be able to just sit in the guard and punch and win a decision here. He won't score enough points even if he wins the next two rounds. I think that Stiebling is one of those kind of fighters. I'm not saying he's going to play possum because obviously with Allen you, you can't do that because he's trying to submit you the whole time. But I think he's saving a little bit in reserve and I think we're going to see a flurry later on in this round or if it goes into the third, for sure in the third. I think so. I really think so because the characteristic, there's a right hand by Stiebling that he used to win the IVC four man, uh, the, the four, the 16 man tournament with the four victories. He did finish strongly. As a matter of fact, he submitted three guys in that tournament and knocked one guy out. That youth, that youth can do that for you. We'll see uh, if that plays a factor here as we go into the third round. Yeah, but like I said, he's got to do something now. He's got to work. Move more, go for the body, go for the head. Hopefully, um, Ellen opens his guard and then try to get out. 
I mean, his, the best chance he has right now is on his feet. Now here the referee uh, giving some commands here. When the guard is closed and the man on the bottom is not moving his hips. There, Allen's moving his arm hips. Arm bar. Beautiful, he's trying for an armbar. Looks like he's pretty good. Steve Ling's got his arms locked. We'll see if Allen can roll him over. Oh, he's got the arm out. in a bad position. Steve Ling's head's up. Watch him just spin around. There he goes. Oh. What a beautiful escape there by Alex Steve Ling. Excellent technique. Get up. This is what he should do. This is his. He should just back up and stand up. We don't know. We don't know how good he is at stand up. And we know Allen from this position, he kicks the crowd out quite a few times in the head from the bottom. You remember the fight? That was an absolutely beautiful escape. Alex Alan goes. I would have to say that Alan is probably better on top. Alan is better on top. There you go. Looks like he's uh, looks like he's tired out a little bit from his attempts to get on top, though. So we'll see. Definitely. Now I think right now he's going to be in trouble if, if Alex throws a knee when Alan is ducking low. It could be a disaster. Stebling looks pretty fresh here. Yep, and Ellen does, and good sprawl. He should get up. He's got to just get back up. Sweat is a factor when you go for an armbar from the bottom. Isn't it? Absolutely, and Stiebling did a good job of the defense there, keeping keeping the hips away from him and spinning around. He's obviously been in that position before. Yeah, that was. These were three unbelievable escapes we saw tonight. <laughs> On the scoring of this round, Matt. Stiebling is ahead in this round. Um, look at him passing the guard there. Nice try. Stiebling is ahead in this round. He's um, got points on takedown defense. Wow, Stiebling really hanging tough. Allen getting up slow. I would have to uh, say that Stiebling may have a surprise for us in that third round. Yeah, he's got to come back really strong in this third round because remember the number one criteria is ending the fight. And what we've seen so far is Goez with some very near submissions and Stiebling with some defenses. And when the referees, or sorry, when the judges go and look at that, they're going to say Goez is the one really trying to finish this fight with his near submissions. Ooh, look at that takedown defense that. and the double knees. Oh, you love that. That's he great. wants the Coleman fight, the Coleman Goez fight. He didn't load up on those knees, though. No, he has the armbar. And this is textbook escape. Break it down, Matt. Okay, Goez down here. He, if Goez turns his head the other direction, he'll get it a little tighter. Stiebling's able to keep his body up, so now all he has to do is spin to his right. Once he comes over to the right, he's got that arm free as long as his head doesn't go back under the legs. Great job. Absolutely, and here it is again from a different angle. Yeah, see the leg, Allen's leg is not up tight to Stiebling's head. Allen should be turning the other direction to lock that up tight. And Stiebling did exactly the right thing there. He looks like a Houdini tonight, Stiebling. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Escapes every impossible position, every impossible submission position. Uh, <laughs> now, Allen may have put forth his best effort in that first round. What we saw it with 30 seconds left was uh, Allen on his back, put his head back down on the canvas, which meant that I'm tired and I'm a little frustrated. When, when a fighter lays his head down, I tell my fighters to pick it up, or if I'm in the fight, I pick it up at that point and try to go for the finish because I know they're frustrated. We'll see if Allen comes out fresher from the rest, but if he doesn't, look for Steveling to dominate this round. Yes, Steveling standing already. It looks to me, it looks, Tom, big Tom Erickson is in Steveling's corner too. Steveling's fired up here. Look at the look in his eyes. I think he's going to come out and start throwing bombs. I think the knee will be a factor standing. We've got drama here in the third round. Stiebling goes pulling guard. Stiebling standing back. Stiebling trying to stop. Stiebling in side control now. Stiebling going for the north-south position. And the knee will be a factor here, folks. Allen has got to pull guard. This is very good for Stiebling right here. Well, now Allen's in the butterfly guard. Yep. Stand up. Yeah, there it is. Very smart move. Listening to his corner. His corner. Phyllis Lee said stand up, and just as a good fighter did, he listened to his corner, got back up. He should really just back up. That's oh, right. goes for a stop there. He's putting a beating here on, and putting a beating here on Allen Goes. This is shades of Mark Coleman, but those aren't landing the big block. This, 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 this oh, my God, he's waiting to A TKO. Oh, my God, we got some 
from a new holy mackerel. What a finish. He came out on fire in that third round. That is absolutely an upset. Big time. We've seen passing of the guard, haven't we? As Alex Stiebling has scored a third round TKO in 45 seconds. Round number three. Well, after the Venezuela win and now beating Alan Goez, nobody can discount Stiebling anymore. God, 23 years old, but we got some talent here. Okay, there it is. There's the stomp, which, which actually connected a little bit, and in the right hand, and Alex just gets busy and flurries up. This guy's a strong finisher. After two hard rounds with Alan, he came back with this kind of effort. It's like you said, uh, Stephen, what he did in the IBC in his first fight. It's exactly what he's doing right now. My God, with two weeks notice, imagine if this guy took the fight six weeks out and got ready. You know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where he's been training, but um, I know for a while he trained on his own. And uh, boy, this kid with uh, the right training and uh, the right conditioning, the right preparation for a fight is gonna be something. I like this guy wow. a lot. Look at that hair. When he, had, when he was in Brazil, his hair was blue. Now, I, I stand corrected on the time. It was 47 seconds uh, TKO in round number three. Alex Stiebling creating a sensation in the, here in Japan. The fighting Brad Pitt has really arrived in the world scene now. From the IBC jumping right into fight and beating Allen goes. Where could this guy go from here, boss? It, 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 the only way is up. I mean, he, he's going straight to the top, trust me. It's like Met says, you know, if, if he's got the right training spotters, he's gonna add some extra training spotters because he's training by himself. It's, it's gonna be very hard to beat. Murillo and Ninja Hua is fast becoming one of the rising stars in the Pride Fighting Championship. From Curitiba, Brazil, he will be taking on an American in Alex Andrade. Oh yeah, Alex El Toro, that's what they call him, the bull. He's coming from Texas, and he's got the nickname because the Lions then, all the people in the Lions then call him El Toro because he's like a bull. He's a good boxer, good kicker, good submission guy, and a good wrestler. This could be a real good fight. Alex Andrade Okay, they call him from the United he States of America. Alex Andrade. Alex Andrade from Laredo, Texas. He hails from Ken Shamrock's famous gym, the Lions Den. Comes in right around 200 pounds at five foot eleven. He's ready to rumble. Six wins, one loss in boxing, and three and zero in kickboxing. And he's uh, ready to rumble against a real tough gentleman from Curitiba, Brazil in Ninja. Yeah, we don't know what to expect with this one. Murillo, I think he has to take him to the ground because his stand-up skills from Alex are better than Murillo's. But apparently Alex is a real good wrestler too. And his takedown defense is phenomenal. All the people from uh, the Lions that are raving about him. So he really got to put something down tonight against Ninja. He's been in the corner of Ken Shamrock. He's been in the corner of Guy Mesger. And now he steps into the center of the stage, the center of the mixed martial arts world, the Pride Fighting Championships. He took this fight on 14 days notice. And he has respect for Ninja. He feels he's an up-and-comer. And, but he wants to make a statement here, heavily influenced by Kung Fu Theater on television. Yeah. And that's what he said. Said it right. He, he, that's when he started liking this kind of fighting. It was in the 80s. Uh, his boxing was heavily influenced by Julio Cesar Chavez, who was a great man to be influenced by. Great left hook to the body. We're going to see if Alex can throw his own left hook to the body in the ring. Alex El Toro Andrade. Today, <laughs> Alex Andrade has got a real strong corner of Trey Telegman, Guy Mesger, and wrestling champion Lily Thompson. 
A lot of experience in that corner. That's going to definitely help Andrade. But speaking of experienced corners, to the left, we got uh, Ninja Hua's master instructor, Hujamar Federigo, and he's also got Jose Pele Landi. That's a lot of experience, too. So their corners are really strong. Both men are a good standing. We're going to see how they are on the ground. Merlo Ninja Hua says he wants to punch with Alex Andrade. And he always, Ninja also says he always feels angry in the ring. <laughs> 21 years old is also scary. And when you're 21 years old and trained at the shoe box, got which is known for the cardio. Look at, coming out throwing bombs here. There's the knee. Ninja trying for the underhook. A, a real strong body lock here by Alex Andrade. Good pumping action there. So we're going to maybe see some knees to the leg here by Andrade, and there's one. Andrade's got the tight body lock there. It's like who is, a, uh, is trying to look for that body lock to loosen so he can get his arm inside and get one underhook. If this stays in this position for too long, there it is. That's what, exactly what I was going to say. They're going to restart the fighter standing. And I expect a bomb here. They come in training, and there's a body lock by Ninja. Ninja with a trip, and Ninja got the, he's got the side control here. Immediate pass. And he's going for his back. And Alex stands back up. Ninja with a suplex. Whoa. What a take down. Andrade was trying to hang out for the chicken right there. Ninja trying another suplex. Andrade hanging on his hook. That's a, that's a foul here. Again, he's going to get a yellow card if he does that again. Ninja trying to show some power here. Oh, Alex has oh. got the arm. Oh! Now, what a wild fight already, folks. Ninja on the bottom. Exactly what we expected. Explosive action here in round one. Alex Andrade on top, Ninja on the bottom. Ninja's good from the bottom. Though. Yeah, it looked like Irwadi was setting up an armbar there. Alex went for the Kimura. <laughs> yeah. Ninja the used a lot. Kimura. Ninja used a lot of energy on those attempted throws when the when the ropes were caught there. We'll see if that plays a part here. But at 21 years old, yeah. he's got a little bit of an advantage over Alex, who's 27, in just a natural gas. Yeah, we've seen we've seen that in Ninja's previous fights. This guy just goes and goes. Yeah, that that gave him the victory. Oh no, it's actually not, yeah, against uh, Matsui. Yes. He kept going and he kept going. Oh yeah, because the Matsui fight, he came out with such a breakneck pace. We thought he was going to run out of gas early, but he didn't. Now let's see what Alex is going to do. Is he going to try to pass the guard? We saw Murillo already. Uh, it doesn't look like Alex wants to pass. It looks like he wants to stay there and punch. There's a grazing right hand. He's going to go now. Ninja trying, trying for the roll. Oh, that was nice. Ninja always puts pressure. I like that about him. He's always going to. He's going to try one side and then the other. This is a very tough submission to get, but he's doing a good job. I think he wants to roll the arm over so that he can switch to another one, possibly an arm bar, or so that he can get some space from the hips when Andrade tries to pull his arm away. Ninja, who's on the bottom, had a bad taste in his mouth about his last fight where he dropped a split decision uh, to Dan Henderson, and he felt he dominated that fight and really would like to fight Henderson again, actually. <laughs> I'm sure that would be a great fight. Yeah, it would. The first one was great, too. Pride 17 is when it happened. But here we are, Andrade on top, dealing with Merlo Ninja. Now, Ninja stands up. Ninja. Whoa. A little slip there. Yeah. Looked like he was going to go for a left kick there. And they're going to trade knees here. Alex has got shoes on, but it was approved for him to kick with the shoes. So we may see some kicks. He's got a good left roundhouse kick. If you remember, Alex was disqualified in a fight for kicking with shoes, but here that won't be a problem. That was against another Brazilian, Omri Batech, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy. And now Ninja is on top, gets a takedown. Andrade on bottom with a tight guard. If Alex doesn't release that, we may see a restart. Ninja said that he knew nothing about Alex and he didn't care. He trains, for, uh, he trains hard for this fight like he does every fight. 
and he wants to win by KO or submission. He wants to show who he is, and he is confident. That's a great attitude to have in the fight game. That means that in all aspects of the fight, he believes in himself. He believes that he can win no matter whether the fight's on the feet, on the ground, or whether he needs to score the takedown or stop the takedown. Oh, it looks like we've got a cut. Is it a cut? No, it's just a scrape. Accidental headbutt, and they, the referee just stopped him and, and checked on it. Now, it's been a wild and woolly first round so far. Matt, how's the scoring situation? Well, the scoring situation is pretty, pretty close right now. They're both working to finish. Uh, Ninja's a little more busy, and uh, Andrade scored well with his little throw with the chicken wing there and may have done some damage. We'll see how that plays out as time goes a little further, if he hurt his arm or not. But Ninja's doing a little bit more right now on the ground and with the takedowns. So Ninja's just slightly ahead right now. Ninja is the youngest on a team from Curitiba, Brazil, by the name of Shootbox. And they also, he also has a teammate called Vanderly Silva, who is fighting later tonight, who is the pride middleweight champion. He's got some great training partners in that team. You've got Anderson Silva, who's one of the best, if not the best, 170-pound fighter. Pele Landy, a legend in his own time. And just a lot of pressure to be put on him on a day-to-day -day basis. And they go hard down there. Absolutely. You can tell by the way he fights here. He just doesn't stop. He never relents on his opponent. And not only is that physically draining to your opponent, but it's mentally draining. Oh, yeah. They're not afraid to throw away energy. All of them from Shootbox Academy. I would think that Alex from the bottom has a few less resources than Ninja does because all he's done is hold on to a, a tight guard and trying to control the arms. He hasn't done much in the way of submissions or reversals. Right. The, the positioning, I think, uh, goes to Ninja. Look at Ninja just staying busy. I think what he's trying to do is make Andrade open his guard through the punches before he passes rather than uh, try to fight off the, the head holding and, and trying to fight off the... Uh, just the grabbing attempts there. Well, with with the exception of the Kimura attempt by Alex Andrade, it's been all ninja so far. A number of takedowns, pretty much dictating the fight. Now here he's landing a couple punches. Yeah, he's putting the pressure on us. Now we see the guard open here. Watch, watch for ninja to sit up and, oh, it's closed again. Yeah, it's the good thing about shoes, you know, your guard, you got a stronger guard. Absolutely. They do leave you open to footlocks a little bit more, too, so they have their disadvantage. Yep, that's true. That's true. It's, uh, Andrade comes from the lion's den, who are footlock specialists, so I guess he feels that uh, it's not going to matter even with the shoes on. Ninja grinding away a couple more punches, causing Alex Andrade to trap him and keep him down close. Ninja really asserting himself, missing a lot of those punches, but nonetheless, the aggressor trying, as Matt said, to finish the fight. Okay, we've got three minutes left in this ground battle. You now, see again, he's also pushing on the throat of Alex constantly, again, to annoy your opponent. It's a very good thing to do. Even though he hasn't scored one major submission hold that did damage or a major punch that did damage, at this point, the judges can go ahead and give him a damage point because he's added up and, and accumulated damage here on Andrade. You can see it starting to take its toll on Andrade's face. And Andrade's laying back. Now he's got his head up, but when you see a fighter laying back with their head down, you know that they're starting to wear down. And Ninja is starting to find that chin of Alex Andrade. There's another, and another punch. He's yep. starting to connect right on the chin. It's hard to get a lot of velocity and power there from the guard, but you still can do damage. And when he, when he stands up high like that, he can get much more leverage into his punches. Yeah, it's a total mental game, like you said, uh, Matt, for Alex now also, because Ninja is throwing and throwing, and he keeps moving and things. When is it going to stop? And if you feel that your opponent is not going to stop, you know, it, it uh, takes you mentally. Here we go. Look for the guard pass here. I, I, wonder why, I wonder why he doesn't stand up. Maybe he feels he can out grapple the guy. Yeah, he, he may feel that uh, if he passes, he'll get into a scramble. And Going for the can the opener neck crank, and Alex trying to punch his way out. Ninja really trying to lock that neck up. Yeah, but it's an easy escape. The only thing you have to do is skip your hips to the left, but then again, you have to open your guard. Yeah. That could be the 
the thing that Ninja wants. Yeah, Ninja yeah, probably is doing that to, to get the guard open so he can either stand up or pass the guard. Putting that pressure on the neck also kind of locks the chest up a little bit, makes it harder for you to breathe. There's the forearm on the throat. Yep. Ninja putting all the pressure here on oh. Alex Andrade. He's going non-stop. Well, Ninja's definitely pulled ahead in this round. He's accumulated damage and he's really trying to finish this fight. I think Alex's only chance is to get up and score a knockout or...